Good morning. Today we put together a panel to discuss how showings and open houses are being handled uh, during this time of COVID-19 and how agents might leverage technology uh, to help sell homes. With us today are uh, GRA immediate past president Kathy Carpenter, Triad MLS Board of Directors member Chris Papillardo, Housing Consultants Group Executive Director Sophia Crisp, Triad MLS CEO Richard Brenton, GRA CEO Mike Barr, and I'm GRA COO Peter Johnston. Um, our president elect Heather Dodson uh, should be joining us momentarily once she gets finished with the closing. Um, so I'd like to, to open it up, uh, Richard, for a, a, a question for you. Uh, what okay. digital systems are currently available in our MLS that could help agents during this time frame that they might not have thought of using? Well, I mean, with uh, obviously Matrix is, is purely mobile on its own natively, but we do have multiple ways. Obviously, we have the 24-7 showing time appointment center access. Um, Try it MLS to go is available. Uh, you know, all of the products that we offer are available through Matrix are available, you know, uh, from anywhere on any device. Um, the thing is, some of them are more geared to uh, tr handle better let's say customer relations remotely, for example, you know, cloud CMA all in the cloud, but if it's a fantastic CMA program, um, when you look at things like savvy card, which are really digital type business cards or digital interactions and digital advertisements that you can use to post your listings through social media. Uh, I got to think that social media obviously is exploding during this. Unfortunately, 50% of it's probably CRAP. Um, but, you know, this is a, you know, these are tools that exist today in the MLS that allow people, you know, uh, Savvy Card, you know, online uh, lead development platform and automates that marketing and gets you leads. Um, it, you know, uh, Rate Plug, again, Rate Plug is a utility more geared towards lenders signing up. But once you do that, once they do that, members actually see that uh, live mortgage data related to a specific property. And that's another way to communicate, you know, virtually real safe agent, you know, again, that talk that deals with safety and showings, and that could be very relevant today and how to, how to best use that platform to keep people on, you know, your, let's say friend list. Um, you know, e-property watch is still a, a tool that you can deliver to your clients so they can see the value of their property. And, and I think ultimately, uh, I don't think we're going to see values of homes going down through this. I think this is a, you know, we don't know how long that's going to last, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, but I do think there will be an end to it and business will go on. And so the big thing is, is how do we all plan on, let's say, surviving for that for that, you know, eventuality, um, list track, that's going to be promoted more so that y'all will know about it, but that's got utilities that will allow you to track your listings, how they're performing online. Um, so one thing, you know, that we are working on also, and it will be released probably in early April is a home visit service. Um, this is basically a digital photography or, you know, postcard service that is going to be available through the MLS. You will be able to download addresses. You will be able to create postcards and mailers, including the postage, and you will never have to leave your home office. You can do it all from your computer. You can do the postage. It gets mailed. You don't have to touch the paper. You don't have to, you know. So there are going to be options. There's going to be options for triad members to contract with photographers if they so desire uh, that can do you know video tours just things like that are needed now how do we put out stuff that helps people work in this virtual environment so we're kind of excited that that's going to be rolling out and you know that's kind of where we are we're putting all of our training if y'all have logged into matrix in the past week you have seen an abundance of communication from us because we are converting all of our training classes over to video-based sessions. 
Um, we're trying to keep these somewhat short. Most are in the uh, under 10 minute range, uh, some even, you know, five minutes, et cetera. But these are always available for people to use and access at any time, especially with the clear cooperation. Uh, we're still moving forward full speed ahead on that. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of stuff going on still here that we're going to continue to communicate out to y'all and make it available. Richard, uh, for featured requests that normally go through the product development committee of the MLS, mm -hmm. is there a streamlined process to add helpful fields into the MLS currently? Um, so is there a streamlined process? You know, we always entertain ideas for membership, right? Um, and while the normal path is to use the MLS product advisory group, um, you know, there is still a process involved in adding new um, helpful fields into the MLS and determining how they work within our business rules. So, you know, we still need to make sure that, that we ensure the stability of matrix. Uh, first and foremost, we will review every item that gets suggested. Uh, you know, at this point, you know, normally those things, like I said, would all go to the chair of the advisory group and then uh, we'd work on it. If like something Chris brought up to the board the other day, and I, that seemed like a pretty good thing to just take off and run with. Um, so, you know, those kind wanna, of things. Do you want to explain yeah. what that idea was? Uh, we talked about that when some of y'all, but uh, Chris was saying, you know, there's ways to, you know, how can we help people conduct virtual open houses? How can we help listing agents manage open houses on their property during this? And, you know, Chris had a great idea. I've already, Beverly chimed in, our Triad MLS president. She said, that's a great idea. I contacted CoreLogic over the weekend. We are asking them, in addition to public and private, let's build some functionality in the open house module in Matrix to allow for virtual. We may think about needing to accommodate either URLs or something to, to, you know, to host that stuff. But we're working on that now. I will tell you, there's a couple of stellar MLS in Florida. Um, they asked me what we were doing, and they said, so they're, they're working on doing the same thing that we're going to try and do. So, again, good thought, Chris. Good timing. A uh, little, little different question for you, Richard, and I don't know if uh, you can answer the whole thing, but um, can, can a buyer's agent take a picture or video tape uh, a listing to show to their client within the MLS rules? And are there any legal ramifications to the buyer's agent for doing that? Yes. So essentially that kind of becomes an ethical issue. If the buyer's agent goes in and wants to do a video tour of a property to show their, you know, instead of having the, the, the buyer go there, the potential buyer, you just have the buyer's agents walking through with a camera. Again, the same issue applies with branding, but more importantly, if you are not the listing agent, do you have permission from that agent or that seller directly to video their home and to what uh, parameters you're restricted to in doing that? I mean, there might be some things that a seller didn't want photoed, but uh, taking pictures that they worked out with their listing agent, and now there's a buyer's agent in the property that's not bound by that same, let's say, confidentiality. So I do think there could be some issues there if permission is not gotten by the appropriate person, whether it be list agent and or seller. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, that helps. And, you know, tied to that question is something that's been, been popping up, uh, um, you know, that's going on right now in, the, in social media. And I'll just ask the question real quick. Can an agent put a a video or picture of another agent's listing on social media uh, soliciting interest on that property? To me, uh, standard MLS, let's say IDX rules, broker, you know, uh, that's, you know, internet data exchange. If you agree that just like you're showing another broker's listings on your website, you should provide the appropriate, uh, you know, naming to say that this listing is provided courtesy of ABC brokerage. You know, you, you need to make it clear that there is no way any consumer could assume that that listing belongs to you. Right. 
And I know none of you want to advertise for other brokers, but on your websites, it's required that, you know, how would you guys like it if somebody took a picture of your listing and advertised it as their own? So that's, that's the ultimate question. Okay. Changing, changing gears a little bit. Um, let's, let's get into some of the, uh, the agent side uh, issues that people might be running into. So for our, the agents that are on our panel, um, are you still showing homes? And have you experienced homeowners who are unwilling to have their sh their home that is for sale shown because of the coronavirus? Um, this is Kathy. Um, yes, I have continued to show homes, um, being very cautious, having my buyers take precautions. And sellers have been especially wonderful right now with uh, leaving wipes out, footies out gloves out, turning on all the lights so that um, myself or buyers do not have to touch things in their home. Um, and then even that, as soon as we get outside the home, we're using hand sanitizer again. So I know there's sellers out there that are stressed and worried and may have taken um, a step back and just said they don't want to show right now, but we, we still are seeing sellers that, that want to sell. Um, we are doing, uh, we've done several things. Yes, we're still showing homes. However, we've put our listings in two categories, vacant and occupied. Um, if they are vacant, uh, we tell the, the buyer's agents again, uh, we'll, we'll come back to showing, but for listings, we have vacant and then we have, uh, active, uh, owner occupied. If they are owner occupied. Um, we have put uh, blue baskets with footies um, at the at the doorway, and we're telling all people to either a remove their shoes or b wear footies, no bare feet. We have put um, containers of uh, hand sanitizer on uh, carabiners on the front door with the lockbox, so that the buyer's agent knows to open up that, put the hand sanitizer on their hand, and then go in and. Uh, check the lockbox. We've asked the sellers to make sure every single door in the home, every closet door, every door is already open, already wide open. And um, every single light is already on. So that way buyers, agents and buyers don't have to be touching switches, don't have to be touching knobs, things of that nature. Um, uh, we've also instructed, we've also put uh, wipes in the property so that if a buyer's agent needs to touch a door or something like that, We've instructed them to grab a wipe and just use the wipe to touch a doorknob, touch handles, things of that nature. Okay. For, um, and because some sellers have to sell and want to sell, right. Uh, and they're okay with it. We have also, uh, been doing forever, uh, walking tours, uh, videos, ladies and gentlemen, one of the benefits of our MLS, if you go to the triad MLS.com and you send your clients there on the top, if it has a tour, it states tour and buyers can see walking tours of properties. They can't get that on Zillow. They can't get that on Trulia. They can't get that on those other places. Send them to our MLS. For buyer's agents, what we're doing is our buyer's agents are have footies in their cars and they are instructing buyers the same way. Please let me be the only person who touches doors, light switches, things of that nature. Wear footies, no bare feet or take off your shoes. They are, they are carrying hand sanitizer. They are carrying Clorox wipes and they're wiping down every door and touching that as they go through the property and turning off lights and doing those same things to get this done. And, um, and, and we're asking our clients to practice social distancing. Let the buyer's agent walk on the front step. You stay at the bottom of the steps. We're going to open the door. We're going to walk through. Then you're going to have you come behind us. You know, just practice safe, um, you know, safe uh, social distancing. And, and we are still showing some homes and we are still getting homes shown. Uh, for vacant properties, frankly, we're telling buyer's agents, because it's vacant, wear footies, don't wear footies, but bring your own precautions to walk through it. Because it's vacant, we're not going to turn on light switches and, that, and, and that, those type things. Um, and we are personally tracking uh, how many listings are going on the market and how many listings are going under contract every day. 
just to remind our clients and our agents that we have been deemed essential and to keep our economy moving forward. There are buyers and sellers who need to sell, do it safely and keep it moving forward. So um, I don't know, uh, Chris, while you're there, um, have you attempted a virtual house and, and how successful was it? So uh, we did our first uh, digital open house uh, Sunday. Uh, that was what led me to uh, reach out to the MS board and say, hey, can we have more than two categories? Right now we have for open house, we have an, uh, two categories of open houses, MLS wide or public. So we chose public. And even though all of our promotions said, go to this website uh, to, to join the Zoom call and the Zoom conference, digital open house, online open house, you know, watch live from your home. We still had three people physically show up at the open house. So we've asked the MLS to, um, to give us a third option, hopefully like a virtual open house, digital, online only, something so that we can let uh, people know. And uh, we had success. We had 11 people look online while I did the virtual open house. And we had, um, with a sign-in sheet, by the way, like registering for the open house, they went to a website, logged in, got the code to come to the Zoom tour. Um, and, uh, and then we had, of course, three people show up. So we had one of our, I had a second agent at the house with me so that she let one group at a time go through the property and follow the protocols we had set in place while I was on my phone doing the digital open house. So uh, for those of you on the screen, you'll see that I actually have two, two, two of me on this right now. One of which is my phone and one is my laptop. So um, it worked well. I walked around with my phone and made my phone a hotspot. And then I was able to do Q and A while I walked through it. And I just did, I basically did four tours, one at two, one at 2.30, one at three and one at 3.30. And I just walked through the whole house. And as people were asking me questions on the chats, I would dig into a deeper spot of the property and everything like that. And it worked fairly well, you know, it worked fairly well. And we'll get better at it. And we're going to be happy to do a Zoom tutorial on it once we get it even more dialed in for agents. That's awesome. Um, so have you, has anybody tried a, a FaceTime or Google Hangout style showing uh, where your clients weren't with you yet? Hey, it's Heather. I've done a FaceTime with a buyer um, that couldn't be here um, and it worked well. I mean, I didn't have any issues. I walked her through the property. Um, I've also done it for a walkthrough as well for a client that was closing um, that they didn't want to come to the, to the walkthrough to. Um, I have a builder walkthrough coming up and we're going to try to FaceTime with that as well. Anybody else? Yeah, we've we've been doing FaceTime with clients for a while now, so that's that's pretty normal. Are there any uh, products or apps you're using or testing uh, that help you do a virtual business? We're using Zoom a lot. Um, you can get a free account of Zoom. You can still do forty minute meetings for free. Um, an unlimited number of meetings. They're just a, a time limit of 40 minutes, or you can spend $15 a month and have unlimited time on, on Zoom meetings. We're also using Google Hangouts and get another free service. Um, and, um, and then uh, we're doing a lot of FaceTime as well. And at, back on showings, if we're asking buyers to stay home uh, and let us do FaceTime showings with them. And then if they love the home, right, then let's go look at it physically if we want to make an offer. So let's just everybody stay home right now and not just go window shopping. Once you think it's the one, then let's get up and go do a, a, a showing physically, just to be clear. Let's, let's still minimize as much, you know, activity outside if we can. So have you, go ahead, Richard. I would just like to, you know, I, I, hopefully all this being temporary, but I think we just, you know, yes, showings is something that we need to figure out how to accommodate uh, a virtual showing by a buyer's agent. Again, just with the make sure that we understand that there are specific permissions required to do that. 
And I, that's what we have to work around, which is a workable thing because it really becomes into just education and compliance. You know, everybody's in this together. That was going to be one of my questions to Richard. It, with the FaceTiming showings, is that going to be fall in the same category as videoing? Um, is, is there an ethical issue there that we need to get permission? Absolutely. I think if you are showing a property that is not your listing, um, then there needs to be specific permission granted for you to advertise uh, a video that you take in the home because they may tell you you can't take a picture of X, Y, Z. You know, uh, my grandmother doesn't wear clothes. You probably shouldn't take pictures of her walking around the house. Um, whatever. You know, it's just that, you know, you have to, <laughs> yeah, picture that. Um, I, I think it just with appropriate permissions, we need to figure out how to weigh, how, how to make this work. And I don't think there's any brokers that are wanting to cooperate with people that wouldn't want somebody to promote their, even if, you know, their listing, as long as it's promoted as their listing versus yours. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, with it being FaceTime, because it's not videoing it, or it's not saving it, it's like walking the plant through the house as if you were there. That doesn't change things, though. Again, I still think it would behoove if we're doing any kind of virtual type of things where you FaceTime as you walking through again, I'm not sure that's what is different about that than you walking that client through the property, right? Uh, the whole idea of photoing and getting permission is kind of formal because right now, today, yesterday, three weeks ago, you took a, a buyer, potential buyer to a property. They probably had their phone out all day long, all, the whole time. They're probably videoing rooms. So this is something that occurs. I don't want to make it too complicated, especially since of the position we're in, but I think we should probably figure out a way to say, look, here's how we're going to do it. It would help just to make sure you contact, you know, as a courtesy, contact a listing agent. I don't know how that would work, but does that make sense? I don't know how you stop it either. And I don't want to discourage it because in this time it makes perfect sense to do. Um, so have you, have you had an experience where you have a, a seller who obviously has their house for sale, right? They want to sell their home, but yet, they don't want anybody to come in, um, and 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 are you using the virtual side of things? Or you've talked them into that, or no, or how are you dealing with that? So we have uh, we have worked out with a few sellers, by the way, who are elderly and at risk. Right? Let's let's be real. Like these are people that, but they they have to sell, and let you know they are in a higher risk. So what we've done with them is we, we've we done walking tour videos of the properties mm -hmm. and um, and we are going to show buyers those. And what, we, what we've done is we said, okay, can you be out of your house for, can you go someplace safe for two to three hours on Saturday? And we are going to only let, it's more work on our part, that's okay. We are only going to let pre-approved buyers, we want to see the pre-approval. And we're going to give them a two hour window to come in and look at your property on Saturday with all the current precautions that we're doing and, um, and then air the property out and have, and just wipe down counters and tops and disinfect when they get back to the property. Um, if they will allow virtual showings only because we can't write offers unless we physically walk the property, then we're recommending they actually take their house off the market right now. If they don't, have to sell until we can get this figured out. If they won't allow somebody who's sincerely wanting to make an offer to physically see it, we don't want it on the market. If they are at risk, we'll give windows of showing opportunities if they're if they're concerned. So so has your company changed any of its policies to help you guys do business virtually? That you know of. Um, well, we got the new NC uh, amendment, the COVID amendment from uh, the Association of Realtors, I mean, uh, you know, NC Realtors. So we're using that. Um, our office is closed. We're, we're all working remotely uh, to keep everybody out of the office. 
and um, you know we're just dis- we're discouraging open houses, but nothing like set in stone other than let's figure this out how to do this in a virtual world, um, and use the new amendment and education. And we're just doing tons of training and Zoom calls on on things like this, uh, you know, all over. Anybody else? It's the same thing. Okay. Okay. So, are you, you know, are one, you, my, go ahead. Can I just add? I, I know that I've noticed looking at uh, there are some folks that are putting a whole page, you know, uh, you know, COVID nineteen update. Uh, you know, I don't know. You know, to let people know what they're doing. I think we're communicating through the news and alert as far as Triad MLS is concerned, and then communicating with y'all. Uh, associations, obviously, we're still doing the support, but I don't know what your thoughts are about maybe creating a page that has all this information in one site. Yeah, we, um, uh, it may be. we we're in the process. Peter and I were, have been working on that, trying to give okay. some resources out to everybody so that they, they, they can click on the link and get the latest and greatest updates. Yeah, so we're in the currently JRA is working on that, that page on the website. Um, cool. So a huge... This is for all the realtors out here. Um, the huge value back in 2009 and 10 was um, the value, you, the knowledge you brought to the to what was going on in the marketplace, and the advice you could give your clients and the resources you could you could point your clients to. Do you think that we're going back to a time, uh, whether it be short or long, that that that's going to be of the utmost importance? And and what kind of uh, n- what kind of knowledge, what kind of uh, information do you need to know about in order to, to be- help people navigate this market? Mike, this is Sophia. Okay. I think the best way to direct clients who are experiencing some financial difficulty, it would be to a housing counseling agency. And that's what Housing Consultants Group is. We we weathered the 2008 um you know, foreclosure crisis. We're hoping this is not the same because the circumstances are different. But as a housing counseling agency and associated with all the other nonprofits in the city and under some guidance from the city of Greensboro, I think that would be the first phone call if they're experiencing any type of financial difficulty as a result of um, this COVID-19. Anyone else? Okay. Peter, you, you want to wrap up? Any other questions or thoughts before we wrap up? No, no, no other questions, thoughts? Hey, Mike. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't have any other questions, but we talked about this offline. We do want to make sure that folks are prioritizing what they're paying if they are having some financial issues. And that goes for realtors as well as your clients, that regardless of what the government's going to do in terms of stimulus money, you need to prioritize what you're going to pay. There are some things that can wait, some people that will wait for you to recover. I wouldn't pay my credit card before I pay my mortgage. So make sure if folks are coming to you with questions about how am I going to make it, that they at least know that they need to prioritize what they're going to pay. Yeah, this, this Sophia, you're right. This is a time uh, to build the confidence and trust of your of your past clients and your current clients. You know, show them your your expertise in real estate um, and be and become the trusted source <clears throat> of, of information and um, to the best of your ability. And I agree. We are um, hosting a class one day a week um, on budget, how to painfully go through your budget line by line and decide what's essential, what's necessary and what's fun. Uh, Cause everybody needs to frankly, uh, you know, budget better. I don't, you know, not to be uh, alarmist, I just, and we're doing that once a week for all of our agents and our clients to just help them get a grapple on, you know, saving your pennies to her point. It's a very, very good point. And um, again, happy to share that. It's not a broker specific thing. This is about just helping all agents and all people, you know, any way we can. 
Um, also, I also want to mention, uh, been blown away how the MLS uh, has been reacting. Like I sent this one little idea out and, um, you know, Richard and Mike and everybody on this call, just, just thank you guys for uh, really just jumping on this and, and really working. How can we make this work? So I just want to thank everybody for, for that. Sincerely, like, it's just so fantastic to be part of an organization like this where we're like, hey, how, do, how does this make sense? How do we keep people safe and keep moving forward since we've been deemed essential to do this? So just thank you guys for that in this call. Thank you. Great idea. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Mike, I also am going to share with you all um, the services that we're providing for first-time home buyers with the down payment assistance. Those services are continuing. We're in talks right now with the city of Greensboro. Should we move to a, a new phase of shutting down, how we're still going to be able to get the checks to the attorneys? We are still doing the down payment assistance classes virtually um, via Zoom. It, we did our first one on Saturday. It was fantastic. And I find that the buyers are more engaged when they're not sitting in a classroom with strangers. The chat worked out very well. So our services are going to continue as well. And pretty quickly, we've been able to get the classes going. And the facilitators are great. And the classes have, the group was really engaged Saturday. So those services will continue. That, that's great to hear, uh, Sophia. And, and we thank you for all the things your, your organization is doing for the marketplace. Um, You're welcome. Peter, do you want to wrap up? Sure. Um, so definitely a big thank you to all the panelists today from the MLS and our agents that are out there in the marketplace. Um, we'll probably be convening <laughs> this gr group of panelists again uh, in the future, if this, especially if this uh, health virus that we've got going on continues longer than we expect with more ideas and updates on what we have. And um, just want to thank everybody for their great ideas. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thanks, all. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.